Okay, we're going to go over the homework for this is uh, section 6 4, starting with number 7, 7 through 44 on pages uh, 379 through 381. And um, the first two problems, they just say decide whether the parallelogram is a rectangle, rhombus, or square. Now, we already know that it is a parallelogram. We already know that both pair of opposite sides are parallel, both pair of opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, all the properties of a parallelogram, we know they have those. Okay, what we've got to decide is if it's a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. Now, all they gave us on that first one, and everybody will say, it's a rectangle, right? But all they gave us was one right angle. They didn't, you know, and a rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles, right? Or all angles congruent, but all they gave me is one right angle. But since it's a parallelogram, I know that opposite angles are congruent, so the one across from it is 90, and consecutive angles are supplementary, so the consecutive angles on either side also have to be 90, so it's a rectangle. So anytime they tell you have a parallelogram, if it has one right angle, all four of them are right angles. Because before, when we had a parallelogram, even if it was not a right angle, if we had one angle, we could find the other four angles. But if it's a right angle, we know all four of them are right angles. Okay. So that's the minimal amount of information that we can uh, use for a, if it's a parallelogram, to prove it's a rectangle. So number seven, yes, was a rectangle. And number eight, it's a rhombus, okay? We already know it's a parallelogram, so we know that opposite sides have to be congruent. They give me two consecutive sides congruent. But if their opposite sides are congruent, then that means all four of them have to be congruent. So it has to be a rhombus, okay? So we don't have to be told that all four sides are congruent, just two consecutive sides, and then we can conclude that all four are congruent. Just like we don't have to be told that all the angles were right angles, just one, and we can conclude that all four are because it's a parallelogram. Okay, so that's why it's a rectangle and a rhombus. And one of the reasons I'm, you know, kind of be emphasize that, and you know, most people could have looked at it and put the answer, but the reason I'm trying to emphasize that later on, we're definitely going to uh, have to be able to do that because I'm going to give you coordinates uh, in a coordinate plane. I'm going to give you the vertices, the coordinates of the vertices, and you'll have to prove what it is, you know, using distance formula, slope, and things like that. And so that's, you know, that's a little more complicated. And we don't have to prove all of those are right angles. We don't have to prove, you know, uh, all the sides are congruent. As long as we can prove two consecutive sides, it could be a rhombus. One right angle, it would be a rectangle, once we know it's a parallelogram, okay? So that makes it a little bit easier. All right, these next ones, we're just finding the measures of the angles. So I'm going to put my homework problems up here, and then I'll just call out the answers to you. I, I answered, I put answers on more than uh, just the ones that they asked for, because um, just because I like to find me the measure of all of them. So on number nine, on this one, they gave us, this was 106. We know that all of these are rhombuses. They're all rhombuses. So all four sides are congruent. Well, you draw one diagonal, then you get two isosceles triangles, and that's the vertex angle. We also know since the diagonals bisect opposite angles, all these angles, one, two, three, and four, had to be congruent. So the way I found them, I subtracted 106 from 180 and divided by two. Got 37 and 37 for the base angles of that isosceles triangle. So all four of those triangles were 37. One, two, three, and four were all 37. Okay, I also put that one was 106 because we know that the opposite angles are congruent. On this one, they started us off with one of the base angles. See, that's another isosceles triangle because that diagonal, you know, split it into two isosceles triangles. So if that one's 26, angle one is 26. 26 and 26 add together, subtract from 180. Angle two would be 128, and angle three would be 128 because those are the opposite angles, right? Next, on number 11, again, we have one diagonal. Okay, they give us the vertex of one of those isosceles triangles. So that's 118. Angle one is 118. 118 from 180 divided by two is 31 for each of those, or all four of those. So angle two was 31 and angle three was 31. Okay, so I just plugged in more angles than actually they asked for, more than just the numbered angles, because it just sometimes makes it easier to, to solve them. And then the next one, same thing. We have one diagonal drawn, so we have two isosceles triangles. If that's 113, angle three is 113. Subtract 113 from 180 and divide by two, because these are the base angles. So angles one, two, and four were all 33.5. 33.5, and angle three was 113. Now on this one, they 
draw both diagonals. And we know that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So I know that these are right angles in here. So angle two is a right angle. That's the first angle I found. Since this is 58 and the diagonals bisect opposite angles, the one next to it is 58. The two up here would be 58. So angle three would be 58. And the only one I really had to find a measure of then was angles one and four because we said uh, we could say 90 and 58 from 180 is 32 and angle four is 32 and these two would be 32. So actually you could find every angle in that picture, right? We were able to find all the angles in the picture. So make sure you have a calculator when you're doing these things so that you can do it quick and easy. Same thing on the next one. We have both diagonals drawn and so angle one is 90 degrees because all four of those angles are 90 degrees. We have really four congruent right triangles. Since this is 30, then this one would be 30. Angle four would be 30. The one next to it would be 30. And of course, 90 and 30 from 180 is 60. So angle two is 60. This angle is 60 and these two up here are 60. So angle three is also 60. Okay, number um, 15, same thing, both diagonals. Angle four and all these angles here are 90 degrees. If this is 35, angle two will be 35, just like these other, you know, I didn't write them in, but all of these would be 35. And then if 90 and 35 for 180, these would be 55. So angle three and one would be 55. So 35, 35, 35, 35, 55, and then 90 in the middle, okay? And same thing for number 16, two diagonals. If this is 60, angle one is 60, angle two is 90, and angle three will be 30, just like that one's 30. Okay, y'all got it? And number 17, same thing again, both diagonals. So if both diagonals there, angle one and three, we know are 90, because all four of those are 90. If that's 35, this is 35. I said 35 and 90 from 180, angle two is 55. So that's how I found them. So we're using triangle angle sum theorem, we're using that the uh, diagonals are perpendicular, so they form right angles, forming right triangles. And we use that the diagonal bisects opposite angles, and that's how we're able to do it. Uh, 18 through uh, 20, what was it? 18 through 23, these are all basically the same problem over and over again because they say that we have a rectangle, uh, LMNP. And the diagonals LN and MP will be congruent, and that's what they do. They give us the measure of LN and MP. Diagonals of a rectangle are congruent, so all we have to do is set them equal. So if LN is X and MP is 2X minus 4, set them equal, solve for X, and I got X was 4. X was 4. Then I had to plug that back in to find out how long LN and MP was, so they're 4 also, right? So all we're doing is writing an equation by setting these two LN and MP equal every time. I don't know why they put six of those. Uh, I could have said, uh, let's just do the even ones of those, but that would have really messed up the way the homework looks. So I just went ahead and did them all. Number 19, and I guess we can always practice doing equations. LN and MP, again, we set them equal. Get X is equal to 3. Plug it back in, and both of them are 7. LN and MP were both 7. On number 20, we set LN and MP equal. X is equal to 1. Plug one back in, and both the segments are four. And those are the diagonals. Remember, the diagonals of a rectangle are always congruent. Number 21, again, set them equal, solve for x. x was nine, and the length of the two diagonals were 67 apiece. 67 apiece when I plugged it back in. Okay, 22 and 23, <clears throat> they came out as fractions. Okay, so but we did the problem the same way. Hold that thing straight. Uh, we set them equal, solve for x, and I got x is five thirds on number twenty-two. And when I plugged it back in here, I just plug. I only have to plug it into one of them. You don't have to plug it into both, right? Because they're the same. So seven times five thirds minus two is thirty-five thirds minus two. That's thirty-five thirds minus six thirds, or twenty-nine thirds. That's what I have as the answer. You could write it as a you know, what would that be? Nine and two-thirds? Or you could have the decimal, 9.666. Okay. Number 23, you set them equal. 
again, same thing we did on all the others. And I got five halves or 2.5. Nine ha uh, five halves is 2.5. And when I plug that in, three times 2.5 is 7.5 plus five is 12.5. So my answer was 12.5 for the length of the two diagonals. Okay. All right, the next ones. <clears throat> now let me put these pictures up here instead of just showing you the answer. The pictures for these, <clears throat> it says determine the most precise name. Okay? Uh, most precise name that we're sure of. So what was the most precise name for 24? It's a rhombus. It's a rhombus. Now I know it appears to be a square, but do we know those are right angles? No. They don't give us that. Oh, we can only go by what they give us. And they do appear to be right angles, but they don't tell us they are. So we know it's a parallelogram because both pair of opposite sides are parallel. And then all four sides are congruent, so that means it's a rhombus. All right, number 25 is just a parallelogram. We know that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. They've marked that, but they're not all four congruent, are they? So, are they? so we got both pair of opposite sides parallel, both pair of opposite sides congruent, but that's just a parallelogram. That's nothing more than that. 26, that's a rhombus because both pair of opposite sides are parallel and all four sides are congruent. So that makes it a rhombus. And the last one, that one's a rectangle. Both pair of opposite sides are parallel, and all four angles are right angles. Now, a square has both pair of opposite sides parallel and all four right angles, but it has to have all four sides congruent, and of course they did not mark sides congruent, so that's how we know it's not a square. All right, 28 through um, 37, I'm going to kind of call those out, those answers out, and, uh, instead of putting them up here because I want to be able to read the question. It says, all sides are congruent. Okay, that's a rhombus and a square. Okay, they say list the quadrilaterals that have the given properties. They're not telling us it is a parallelogram, but the, it says list the quadrilaterals, so it can be more than one. Okay, so on that one, all sides are congruent. That would be a rhombus and a square. Number 29, opposite sides are congruent. That's a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. It's all four. Number 30, opposite sides are parallel. Again, that's all of them. Parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. If it's a property of a parallelogram, then all four of them have that property. So that's why um, Number 29 and 30 are properties of parallelograms, so that means all four of them will be that. Just like the next one, opposite angles are congruent, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, square, all of them. 32, all angles are right angles, that's just a rectangle and a square. 33, consecutive angles are supplementary, that's again all of them, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. 34, diagonals bisect each other. That's all of them. Parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. And then diagonals are congruent. That's only rectangle and square. Rectangle and square. And then number 36, diagonals are perpendicular. That's rhombus and square. And each diagonal bisects opposite angles. That's rhombus and square rhombus and square. So basically, I've you know, given you this that has all the properties of uh, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and of course the square has all of those. So see, we mentioned square on every one of those, didn't we? Every one of them was a square, right? Some were all four things and some, you know, but every one was a square because a square has all the properties and these are all those properties listed, you know, just one at a time. All right, number 38, <clears throat> on number 38, uh, notice on this one, they want us to find the values of the variables and then find the side lengths. We already know all the sides are 15, right? Because it's a rhombus. If that side's 15, they're all 15. So the easiest way to do this would say just 5x is equal to 15, x is equal to 3, and 3y equals 15, so y was equal to 5. So that's, that's what I did. You know, we knew all the sides were 15 because it's a rhombus, and that top one was 15. So I just said, now, I have people in, the other, in other classes that they said 4x plus 3 equals 15. That's fine. It is. 
and you'd still get x is equal to 3, but the simplest thing was just say 5x is equal to 15, right? Or I think so, anyway. All right, number 39, that one it tells us is a square. So all of its sides are congruent once we figure out what they are. So you could set any two equal, any two sides equal. Now, you don't want to set this one equal to this one because they both have an x and y in it, but I just set these two equal because to me they seem like they would be simplest. y minus 1 equals 2y minus 5. I got y was equal to 4. Then once y was 4, I could plug it in and say, hey, 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 5 is 3. So all the sides are 3. So I know that 2x minus 7 was equal to 3. And that's how I got x is equal to 5. Okay? So that's the way I solved it. I thought that was the easiest way, just setting these two equal. Like I said, you could have set these two equal. You could have set these two equal. But I felt like that was the easiest one. Okay? I always say work smarter, not harder. So if you can figure out the easiest way to do it, you know, that's what you should do. Uh, number 40 was a proof. Let me zoom out so we can see it. Okay, it told me that I had a rectangle. Rectangle, rectangle P-L-A-N. And they want me to prove that these two triangles, this one, P-T-L and N-T, well, they actually call it L-T-P and A-T-N. They want me to prove those two triangles congruent. And this is the way I did it. I had some people in first period that did it a different way, but... I did it this way. I said that, okay, I know since it's rectangle, the diagonals PA and LN are congruent. This is PA, this is LN, they're congruent. All right. We also, in a rectangle, because it's a parallelogram, it's been bisected. So that means that all their halves, PT, AT, NT, and LT are congruent. See, each one of these would be congruent. So if those diagonals are congruent and they've been bisected, then all four of these are congruent. Diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. That's what I put for my reason. Because a rectangle is a parallelogram. So then I had all four of these segments congruent, so all I needed was a pair of angles, and I said these two angles are congruent because vertical angles are congruent, and I said the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So we were just applying the missing reasons. So I have the uh, rectangle, okay, and it says it's a rectangle, right? That's given. Then from up saying it's a rectangle, they also said ABCD is a parallelogram. Well, definition of a rectangle because the rectangle says a parallelogram with four congruent angles, right? So, yeah, it's a parallelogram it's a, if it's a rectangle, so that's what they put next. Then they said BC was congruent to BC. That's the segment down here at the bottom. That's reflexive property. Because this time we're trying to prove we're, we're trying to prove that the diagonals are congruent. Okay? The diagonals are congruent. So I'm going to prove these two triangles, these two overlapping triangles that share BC down here at the bottom. So BC is congruent that to BC by reflexive property. Then also they said since it's a rectangle, uh, the angles down here ABC and DCB are right angles, definition of a rectangle, because a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So we said it was a rectangle. Now we say it's got four right angles. If those are right angles, they're congruent, because all right angles are congruent. They got that. Since it was a rectangle, AB and DC are congruent. That's these two sides, AB and DC. Okay. So now I have a side and an angle, a side, an angle, and that side, BC, you know, by reflexive property. So that's what they did. They said the triangles are congruent because the right angles are congruent. These sides are congruent. We already said BC was congruent to itself. So side angle side proves the triangle is congruent. So the diagonals AC and BD are congruent because of CPCTC. C, T, C. They're corresponding parts. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's how they went about proving that one. All you were doing is supplying the missing statements and reasons from time to time, right? And, of course, when they said side angle side, you knew that had to be triangles congruent. Surely, because that's the only thing we'd use side angle side for right now. All right, and the last three, 42, 43, and 44, um, we had some given information in this first one about a about this figure here. So you had to decide what kind of figure this is, okay? It says it's a parallelogram, but we know it has to be a what? 
number 42, a rectangle, because it's a parallelogram and it's got one right angle, so that means all of those angles will be right angles, so we know it's a rectangle. And they tell me that RZ, which is just this piece of the diagonal, half of the diagonal, because the diagonals bisect each other. So this is 2x plus 5, and this would be 2x plus 5. Okay. Even though they just gave me RZ, I know that both of them have to be 2x plus 5 because it's a parallelogram and the diagonals bisect each other. And then the other thing they gave me was SW. SW, this whole diagonal, is 5x minus 20. So what I did, I said 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 5 equals 5x minus 20. Or 2 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 5x minus 20. Then when I distribute, I got 4x plus 10 equals 5x minus 20. Solve for x by subtracting 4x, got x minus 20 equals 10, and then add 20 and get x is 30. X is 30. All it asked me to do is find the value of the variables. But if I plugged it back in, that would tell me rz is 65, and zw was, or sw, was 130. And yes, yeah, 65 plus 65 is 130, so I know I did it right. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, hope so. 43, what kind of figure is number 43? What kind was 43? It's a square, isn't it? See, we know it's a parallelogram. It's got one right angle. That means they're all right angles, so it's a rectangle. And also two consecutive sides congruent. That means all four sides are congruent. So that means it's a, rom uh, it's a square. It's, it's a rhombus and a rectangle, so it's a square. So that means that if this is 90, these are 45 apiece because the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. And these would be 45 apiece because the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So 9x is equal to 45, x is equal to 5. 6z is equal to 45, so z is 7.5. And then the other thing they gave me at the top, they told me the measure of angle 1 was 3y minus 6. Well, there's angle 1, and angle 1 has to be a right angle because the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means that 3y minus 6 equals 90, so y was equal to 32. So x was 5, y is 32, and z is 7.5. And the last one, number 44, uh, is a lot more complicated, I guess. It's another square, okay? It's another square. I know it's a square because, again, they have a right angle in this parallelogram, which means all four would be right angles. Two consecutive sides congruent of this parallelogram, so that means all four sides will be congruent. So the diagonals are perpendicular, and they bisect opposite angles, right? But this time they're not doing angles, we're doing sides. <clears throat> they give me these two parts of the diagonals. They have to be equal because we know that it's a parallelogram and the diagonals bisect each other, so this has to be equal to this. Okay, so I set those two equal. They also told me at the start that BD, this whole segment, was equal to 4x minus y plus 1. So guess what? This whole thing is equal to these two added together. So I said those two added together, 2x minus 1 plus 3y plus 5, is equal to 4x minus y plus 1. Okay? I said it. So now I have two equations with two variables, and I have to solve them, and I do it by elimination. And how I did this is the top equation, I rearranged it. I moved the 3y over here. It'll become a negative 3y, so 2x minus 3y, and I moved the 1 over there by adding it, and I got 6. So I just rearranged this top equation by moving this over here with the, with the x, and it become a negative 3y, and moving the 6 over there by adding it and getting 6, moving the 1 over there by adding and getting 6 okay, when I moved it over there. Down this bottom equation, there was a lot more moving around. I had to put the 4x with the 2x on this side, so I got to subtract it. So 2x minus 4x was negative 2x. And I went ahead and moved my y over here. The negative y over here becomes a positive y, so 3y and y is 4y. And I moved that negative one to the other side. And I get, uh, and well, first I added those together negative 1 and 5 was 4. Then move the 4 over there with the 1, and I got negative 3. Because you subtract 4 from 1, you get negative 3. And then I can just add those two equations together. The x's cancel. I get y, because negative 3 plus 4 is y. Okay, uh, So y was equal to 3. Into, I put it back into the top equation over here, 
I put in, instead of y, I put 3. And then I saw that 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 is 14. Add 1 is 15 and divide by 2. So x was equal to 7.5. 7.5. So that's all those, that homework.